The hammerhead hull is one of the most brutally effective hull shapes that you can employ, offering strong concentrated firepower and the ability to brawl in long engagements, they will wreck enemy formations when deployed correctly. Largely popularised by Old Republic hammerhead cruisers, the hammerhead shape has seen increased usage across numerous sci-fi universes and laws since. Characterised by a bow reminiscent of a hammerhead shark's head, they have proven time and time again to be effective hulls for combat-oriented vessels. There are many different variants and ways in which hammerheads can be defined, but for the purposes of this video, I'm referring to a wide forward section, either horizontal or vertical, followed by a noticeably thinner section with an again wider aft thruster array. This hull shape is present across Star Wars, Star Citizen, throughout Space Engineers and multiple other sci-fi games. What this comes down to is delivering high volume forward fire while saturating return fire with a large target and strong armour. If you think of an Age of Sail warship's broadside, a hammerhead shape allows you to basically rotate that to the front of the ship. A strong contender for an alternative shape is the wedge. Super firing guns can provide concentrated fire with more evenly distributed hull armour. However, a hammerhead shape allows for better outrigs and firing arcs for your turrets, Pointed at the enemy, the hammerhead will also put more armour before its critical systems. I will go further into the wedge shaped hull in a future video, but for now let's dig more into the advantages and downsides of the hammerhead shape. The tips of the blade provide an excellent spot for turrets. In fact, you have one of the best turret mounts you can get with any shape based on its firing arc. What you put here is the question. These guns will be able to fire in almost any direction, but are also the most exposed. You could put heavy anti-capital weaponry here, or you could mount fierce and point defence guns to shred fighters. Whatever you put here, make sure it's the best available turret that will fit for the job that you're trying to do. These hard points are really something you need to leverage to take full advantage of this shape. The large blade at the front of the ship is also a brilliant location for sensor arrays and heavy weapon batteries, providing ample surface area to mount heavy forward weaponry for opening bombardments. The large forward blade saturates enemy fire across a large surface area, effectively protecting the rear and more vulnerable sections of the ship. While that's all fantastic, there are some downsides that must be considered when using this hull shape. The section immediately behind the blade or head is often a critical weak point in a hammerhead design. Unless effectively reinforced, you risk the blade being severed from the main hull. Directly to the side of the blade or the head, however you have it orientated, makes for a large profile and will be an easy target for long range enemy weapons. If surrounded by heavy warships, the hammerhead shape loses its critical advantage from frontal attacks. Its aft section will be exposed and the forward guns will be unable to fire at all available targets. I mentioned earlier the large surface area of the bow saturates enemy fire effectively, However, the straight trade-off for this is that enemies can still hit it easier. So why do I consider this to be a brilliant shape? The answer lies in successful application of the hull and exercising all the benefits offered by it. First, we need the right class of warship to dictate armament and firepower. Let's think about their role and if a hammerhead style hull would benefit them. Cruisers want to engage at range, turning slow and acting as mobile command centres or flagships. Whilst you can make an argument for the hammerhead hull, I think hull shapes offering more evenly distributed firing arcs like a cylinder, wedge or T-shape would be a more suitable choice. Frigates can definitely use a hammerhead shape effectively, mainly the assault variants, but even so, they are still on the more cumbersome side of weight class and you may struggle to consistently manoeuvre the ship to face your enemies, especially as damage the gyro controller crews. Corvettes and destroyers is where I think the hammerhead shape really shines. These are small enough to turn to face enemies and bring all guns to bear, and are light and fast enough to strike quickly at enemy formations. Corvettes can make full use of the outstanding coverage offered by the hardpoints on either end of the hammerhead. While the fighter craft they are encountering will often struggle to damage even basic large ship armour plating on the delicate mid or aft sections. So effectively, your enemy will struggle to penetrate your armour anyway, which balances out the weak points and you maximise the advantage gained by having extremely potent PDC cannons 
mounted in excellent positions. Destroyers can mount disproportionately heavy weaponry compared to the ship's weight on the hammerhead hardpoints, allowing them to fire at the enemy when approaching or skedaddling. Heavy forward guns can also be mounted, creating the ideal brawling ships which can frontally assault enemy capital ships, unloading masses of ordnance whilst absorbing fire with its concentrated forward hull armour. I mentioned it earlier, but whatever you're mounting on these hardpoints, make sure it's the best you've got that will comfortably fit. This is a weak point, reinforce it. Run heavy armour beams down either side, add spaced armour, redundant conveyor networks, anything to improve survivability. You can have a bridge on the hammerhead by all means, but ensure you have a more protected CIC deeper in the hull for use during combat. Ensure higher levels of rotational control and manoeuvrability are maintained. You need to point your guns at enemies and keep them inside your firing arcs whilst only presenting them with your well-armoured bow. Evenly distributed forward guns along the blade so they can't all be taken out at once. Make full use of available mountings and field high calibre guns. Add some firepower midship and aft for any stray fighters that pass by and as a basic layer of point defence. Simple PDC turrets or Gatling turrets will suffice. Now we've minimised weaknesses and maximised our strengths, finally we need to control how hammerhead ships are deployed and utilised in engagements and how to use them effectively. We have the ability to provide heavy concentrate forward firepower, bring powerful turrets to bear in nearly any direction and strong frontal armour. With this in mind, we will want to employ hammerheads in a frontline role directly supported by a fleet to prevent being overwhelmed and surrounded. Within a battle group, they should push forward when possible and brawl with enemy ships and fighters, soaking up shots to the bow whilst unleashing their ordnance. When I say push, I mean conservatively or if the enemy is routed. Do not send hammerheads directly into formations. On paper, they could be great at smashing through these, but they'll get quickly overwhelmed from omnidirectional fire. Give them time to empty their ammo first into an enemy fleet whilst their bow sponges the damage. When all these aspects are applied correctly, you have a frontally strong ship with excellent returning firepower, ideal turret mounts, protected rear systems, and if it comes to it, a built-in ram. That makes for a potent mix, which will prove a tough nut to crack when implemented effectively into your fleet compositions. Whilst I've been quite specific as to what I classify as a hammerhead hull shape, if you widen your net a little bit, there are some other very similar designs, often featuring the same advantages and drawbacks. The most popular of these is the blade design. Seen prominently on the Nebulon B and Nebulon C frigates in Star Wars, the blade is most often vertical and offers a great platform for turret batteries, sensor arrays and fixed weapons. Another more niche hammerhead shape can be featured on wedge designs or more standard hulls where the bow flares to accommodate forward weaponry or a ram in some cases. So that's my case for the hammerhead design, why I like it so much and why I believe it's effective. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below and if there are any other hull shapes you'd like to see covered. Take care, everybody.